Hey folks, Astro Dodger number one here. Uh, this video is about a 50 hour service on a Rural King 19 tractor. Uh, I ended up doing the video over several days and it gets rambling and it's going to be really long. And uh, I know only a few hundred to a few thousand people will see this video. I pretty much do them for my own benefit because I know I'll have to do this again in two years. But uh, just to make your lives easier, I'm going to put down all the part numbers and uh, tools needed in the beginning and then uh, skip ahead about three or four minutes into the video and that's when I actually get into the process of uh, doing the 50 hour service. Alright guys, take care. Okay, as far as the uh, capacities and part numbers, uh, these are the part numbers for the filters that Rural King gave me on the receipt. I don't know what they, they don't match up to the other numbers, but you're going to need uh, four gallons of trans hydraulic oil, and these are your capacities. Here's the uh, TYM part number for the filter. And for the oil, here's the part number for the oil filter. And your capacities. And 8590 gear oil for the front axle. And your capacities. A 12 millimeter wrencher socket for the front axle drain and vents. And you're also going to need a Mac 14 millimeter for the oil drain plug. And SK 19 millimeter for the Hydraulic oil drain, a SNK 22 millimeter for the hydraulic oil strainer, and a oil filter wrench. And you can use any other brand of wrench, it'll still work fine. Uh, also, you're going to want at least two oil containers. You got to remember that the uh, hydraulic oil is going to be close to four gallons. Today, or at least in the next few days, I'm going to be doing a 50 hour service on this Rural King 19 tractor. Uh, oil change, hydraulics, filters, all that good stuff. Again, the tractor has uh, 58 hours on it. I uh, really needed those last eight hours to finish up, you know, the work on the garage. But uh, I think it was worth it. So 45 hours, I bought all the filters and goods and stuff like that. And also at that time, the mid... PTO fell apart so I walked into my local Rural King and said hey I uh, need one of these and an oil filter and all that stuff and they were like oh sorry about that that happens here's a new one so I replaced that at 45 hours and it's been working fine since also the Moor deck chute uh, broke off so not sure what I'm going to do about that and then the only issue I'm working right now is the, uh, for the mid here, the deck won't go up or down. That knob stuck, froze shut at about 53 hours, so this deck won't go up or down. So the first thing I'm going to do is maybe give her a quick little wash. Take off this mid deck, which is a real pain. And then uh, get on to the 50 hour maintenance. So she's been sitting here since about mid-October. Today is uh, February 18th, 2021. Really warm day here. We got storms coming in, so I'm not getting this done today. It's 83 degrees out, but it won't be in a few hours. So I'm just gonna check the oil on this and see what where that's at. And it doesn't look that bad. Uh, it doesn't smell. Viscosity seems fine. And I haven't added any oil to it since I bought it new in March of 2020. Fuel filter looks pretty clear. Uh, no leaks. Or anything that I can see on it. Alright, so I'll probably just go ahead and start her up. And then uh, run it for a bit should start it's been four months but I bet you she'll fire right up Pushing the 
clutch, turn our key. Look for those glow plugs. We got what, 58.4 hours. Half a tank of fuel. Hold right up. Well, she cleaned up well, and now I just need to remove this pain in the ass 54-inch uh, deck. I've never actually removed the entire deck by myself. A uh, tree stump was kind enough to remove the front of it for me. And then out in the woods, I figured out how to get the rest of it. Well, we got her in the garage here, all nice and dry next to its unlikely cellmate. Um, I was waiting for this garage to get finished up before I did this 50 hour maintenance. So, garage is done, no more excuses. Oh, goodbye cellmate, be free. Go out into the world. All right, we'll start with the engine oil change first because I think it's still maybe warm from yesterday. I just noticed that there's two oil filler caps. Uh, why would they make two holes and an extra part that could leak and cause problems? I don't know. I'm from the automotive world. I don't trust you. So we'll just vent from the top guy. All right, we'll use our trusty cat litter box. Take the 14, remove this. Man, those Koreans are strong. There's only about two quarts coming out of here. Well, those guys are stronger than they look. It's rare that I can't get an oil filter off without my hands. But I had to use the water pump players on these. Strong fellas. We'll just clean the oil filter surface boss off a little bit of fresh oil on the uh, o-ring here so I'm spinning this on hand tight that way I can get it off by myself again we'll wipe the bottom and Get our 14 millimeter drain plug back in. And again, this has a crush gasket in it, which I would normally flip, but it's pretty well glued in place by the yellow paint. So we'll leave it at that. So it calls for two liters. So just about a half a gallon, a little over two quarts. And I assume that's with the oil filter. So we'll leave it right around that two quart, two quart, two liter mark and check it. And then run it and then add as necessary. So just about the two liter mark, just shy of two quarts. It's showing about halfway up the stick, so I'll add a little bit more. And then again, when I fire it up, I'll add even more. So I mentioned earlier that my midpoint hydraulic lift is pretty much seized. I mean, I can really force it if I want to, but I thought there might be a stick or something in there. But then I'm looking down into it and uh, there's no stick or obstruction that goes right the into the lever is not the box locked there. for the midpoint, but via another YouTube video I learned that there's a sight window for the hydraulic fluid, and mine does not seem to be up to that red dot in the center, which it should be at. So hopefully it's just a little low on fluid. 
I'm kind of creeped out that at 52, 53 hours it's low on fluid. I haven't seen anything leaking, but again, I haven't been looking either. I believe this is the fill cap. Man, these things are on tight. These guys are strong for the hydraulic fluid. Just vent that out. All right, so on to this 19 millimeter for the hydraulic fluid. Oh, that came off easy. Hmm. Maybe a less stronger Korean put that on. Yeah, this is going to be kind of a mess because, I don't know, it's going to be kind of a mess. Coming out, just barely making it into the bucket. So again, the hydraulic fluid capacity is a little over 14 quarts. This drain bucket holds 15. And the hydraulic drain uses a O-ring gasket. Tighten that up. So the mechanical strainer for the hydraulic system is over here, but I still have this yellow nut over here, which I'm not sure what it does. Maybe it just drains oil from the filter gallery. Couldn't tell you, but I'm taking it off to find out what it does. So I'm expecting maybe a little bit of hydraulic fluid to come out of here. Yeah, I think that's just a gallery drain for the oil filter. So again, this filter I cannot get off of my hands, which is rare, so it's on pretty tight. So we're gonna pull out the uh, water pump pliers, get this hydraulic filter off. So for a motor oil filter, I use motor oil on the gasket for a hydraulic fluid filter. I guess I use hydraulic fluid. We're going to put this drain plug back in. Again, I think it just uh, drains residual fluid from the uh, oil filter. And tighten that down. And then the hydraulic filter. Let's spin that on. And I'm only putting it on hand tight. I'm pretty sure those Korean fellas are using wrenches. That'll be good. And lastly, this 23 millimeter mechanical hydraulic screen. So far I've managed not to get any oil on the ground, but I'm sure that can change. More fluid. Keep an eye on that O ring. And then the screen. Screen looks good. You're supposed to clean it in diesel fuel. I don't think I have any diesel fuel. Maybe a little bit. I might hit it with carb cleaner and then soak it in diesel. Again, I'm new at tractors. I'm not sure if this is bad or good. So I'll probably just hit it with a little bit of carb cleaner and uh, I don't know, put a little bit of hydraulic oil on it and thread it back in. Alright, so I just blasted this with carb cleaner. Uh, light's going through it. Doesn't seem clogged at all to me. So, when the carb cleaner dries, I'm just gonna dunk it in our bucket of hydraulic oil. 
Almost it fits perfectly. And it'll be all set to go back. So just a careful clean out here. This pipe moves. I don't want to disturb anything or get any dirt between the pipe and the uh, the housing here, the oil housing. Screw that back in. And then tighten it down. Uh, this housing is aluminum or magnesium. It's a very light material, so I'm not going to crank on it. And there's a, a large boss bolt surface here for it. So it probably doesn't need to be on as tight as it came off. All right, to recap, we drained the hydraulic fluid through there. And then we drained residual fluid from the oil filter, I guess, the hydraulic filter from that screw. Replaced the filter and uh, cleaned out the hydraulic screen. And now we're gonna put in our fluid. Now Tesla's back. She's juicing up for a road trip tomorrow. But we are putting oil in our dinosaur powered machine. Holds about 14 quarts. Which is 2.6 gallons. And this is a two gallon container, so we're going to dump in two. About three gallons, I'm going to keep a close eye on that fill level. It holds 3.6. I want to know when it starts to come up. So at a little over three gallons, I just want to keep an eye on that fill level. It should start coming up. There she goes. So I'm going to fill that to a tad over half and then uh, run the hydraulics and all that stuff and see where that level's at after that process. All right, that's just over the uh, red dot right there. So once we start it up and run the hydraulics and get that filter full, hopefully that'll be right where it needs to be. So lastly at the front here, we got the front uh, gear oil. And so I'm just gonna vent it here. And then oh, I got a rip boot there. I'll probably just put grease in that and forget about it. And then you're going to need a real short oil pan. And then you've got a 12 millimeter uh, drain here on the right front. So I replaced this, or I opened this filler cap here. And I noticed it's basically a dipstick for the front axle oil. And it only has like a drop at the very tip, so I guess it's low. I don't see a leak. I don't know where it went. Maybe it came low from the factory. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, this stuff's going to take a while to drain. Uh, the drain plug itself, the 12 millimeter drain plug, did not have any type of gasket or o-ring, but I do see that there's like a Teflon tape or some type of Teflon seal around there. So I don't think I'll put any back when I put it back on. Alright, so while I'm waiting about a half hour for that front axle oil to drain, I'm just going to check uh, other things out. You know, alternator belt seems fine. Again, I don't see any leaks or anything like that. Um, 
going to clean out this front screen here. Uh, for some reason they put a wire wrap there, so I'm just going to cut that wire wrap off and then I can pop off this overflow cap and then pull that screen out easily and I'll probably just leave that wire off. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Battery terminals don't have any corrosion. Uh, I think it's looking pretty good. And then underneath that plastic fan uh, seems to be fine. The only thing I notice underneath here, besides I need to grease some things, is uh, right here the uh, shaft going to the front is rubbing against this cable here and it's getting all shiny right there. So uh, I'm going to try to reroute this cable somehow. Yeah, so I just pushed this cable onto the other side of this tab, and that seems to not be interfering now. So I got about two quarts out of this. Uh, it should be a little over two and a half quarts, but like I said, it was barely reading on that stick. So I think it just was delivered to me a little low. Also, you'll notice there's two uh, white marked... Uh, bolts here, screws. Uh, I believe those are just for venting when you're filling the 8090 oil in. So as the oil goes up that casting, you take those off and let that air out. So I can't see any other use for them. And there's one on both sides. As it gets closer to full, that oil goes in really slow. But I think we're all topped off. So we got the oil right to that notch right there. I believe that's the full mark. I'll research that later, but it takes 0.66 gallons and yeah, it's probably what I put in it. And then don't forget to replace your vent plugs on both sides. Now I'm just gonna check the tire pressures. The manual says for the turf tires, uh, 16 by 7 front and 24 by 12 in the back. 24 by 12 should be 20 psi, and the 16 by 7 front should be 23 psi. Uh, this is a 18 by 850 and a 26 by 12 in the back. So I'm going to set them to the same pressures that the manufacturer recommends for the smaller tire. Yeah, and all the tires are down about 10 PSI, and I could tell beforehand because I was getting more wear on the outside of the tire, so I knew they were low. So, last but not least, I gotta find all the grease fittings on this and grease it, and then I'm gonna fire it up, run the hydraulics. Uh, hopefully that midpoint will come back. Probably won't. And then uh, recheck the fluid levels. close to a cork to it and uh, it's right at the center there we'll fire it up run the hydraulics and see where that takes it <laughs> 